If you watched my last video about Lt. Gen. Patton in Operation Fortitude, from the Patton series Part 4, you would know that Patton was slowly recovering from the Sicilian soldier slapping incidents by being a figurehead leader of a phantom army in England. This phony operation was meant to fool the Germans into thinking that the Allied landings would take place at the narrowest point of the English Channel, at Pas de Calais. Lt. Gen. Patton was extremely anxious to activate 3rd Army on August 1, 1944. He had been on the sidelines, giving speeches and training troops for about a year, but now was his time and he knew it. Even though the Allies had landed almost two months before, due to German counter-moves, they had not made the territorial gains expected, instead, they were locked in attritional battles in hedgerow country. Operation Cobra was an effort to blow open the front lines to make way for the next phase of operations. This it did, opening a hole 10 miles wide and 10 miles deep in the German 7th Army's front. The two pieces of good news for the Allies about the war of attrition was that they were winning it and the Germans had almost no real reserves left. This would turn a breakout into a blowout if the general leading the troops was aggressive like General Patton. Allied documents captured by the Germans on July 21st appeared to confirm the presence of 3rd Army in Normandy. The first specific report of Patton's arrival reached them on July 22nd, when the 17th SS Ponsagrenadier Division reported a rumor from Allied prisoners that Patton and 3rd Army were in the area. The prisoners described Patton as the great tank commander, who had met with success in Africa. The Germans handled the matter routinely. The words 3rd Army and Patton, followed by a question mark, first appeared on an Army Group B situation map on July 30th. There is no evidence that the information went farther up the chain of command at that time. The 3rd Army had only one general order from Patton. Seek out the enemy. Trap him. And destroy him. Patton turned 3rd Army east, west, and south behind the German lines and went looking for trouble. Fire! General Patton didn't believe in defensive tactics. He believed in attacking. He often told his soldiers, when in doubt, attack. They knew that to defeat the Germans, they had to be on the offensive at all times. Like a boxer, they understood that once you got your opponent on the ropes, you had to keep hitting at him. Until he went down. You couldn't let up and give him a chance to rest. Kamerad, bitte bitte. On August 3rd. General Bradley ordered General Patton to leave a small force behind for security and to throw the weight of 3rd Army Southeast. Conditions for this were perfect. The German 7th Army had prepared no security measures in its rear areas. The 9th Panzer and 708th Infantry Divisions were supposed to cover 7th Army's southern wing. But they hadn't arrived yet. Proceeding from Avranche, the task force was to bypass all resistance, except at the bridges. All task force units were to carry rations for six days, fuel for 250 miles, a basic ammunition load transportable in organic vehicles, and water chlorination tablets. Naturally rambunctious American GIs fought best, Patton insisted, when rolling forward, especially in summertime. The clear skies would show overwhelming American air support. In August, his soldiers could camp outside, while his speeding tanks still had dry roads. When General Patton made no provision for the capture of the ports on the coasts, Bradley went along with Patton's concept of clearing the entire peninsula before besieging the port cities. The soldiers of the Third Army took the fight to the enemy. They swept over the Brittany Peninsula before the Germans knew what was happening. Two tank columns of the 6th Armored Division, commanded by Major General R. W. Groh, 
force the Germans to withdraw into the fortified ports. General Patton loved to fly in a Piper Cub plane, which normally was used for artillery observation. He used it to check on the progress of his rolling army, which usually moves so fast that this was a good way to do his own recon of the situation on the ground. While looking at the maps, Adolf Hitler and his general staff cooked up an idea that might just negate the entire breakout into Brittany, and lead to final victory. He quickly ordered General Hans von Kluge to gather the necessary forces and attack to the coast at the base of the peninsula. This would cut off the supplies and reinforcements of Patton's Third Army, which had already advanced into Brittany. However, von Kluge knew that this would be much more difficult than Hitler had envisioned. At this point, German panzer divisions had to be used defensively on the front lines in the west, because regular German divisions were weak and undermanned. There was a danger that the moment the panzer divisions pulled away, the fronts might collapse. On top of this, they had to move at night because fighter bombers roamed the skies looking for any road movement. Even so, against all odds, von Kluge was able to gather a considerable force of arms for the attack, including the 1st SS and 116th Panzer Divisions. Although the Germans achieved some temporary successes and fighting continued for a few days, General Bradley had been warned of the more 10 counter-attack in advance by ultra-intercepts and took the necessary steps to stop it. Allied fighter bombers also took an enormous toll on the offensive, which stalled and then failed. The Germans received only scattered reports of Third Army's activities until August 10, when they first realized that a powerful enemy force was turning north from behind 7th Army. British General Montgomery's troops in the north were simultaneously smashing through the German front to link up with Patton. That morning, Patton, confident Third Army could close the gap and encircle Seventh Army, stood on the brink of one of the greatest victories of the war. But that's a story for Part 6 in the Patton series. Look for it soon. If you would like to see more videos like this, then check out my channel. Here are two other videos you may enjoy. Oh, and don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring the bell to get notifications of great future content.